This is the second of three videos briefly introducing dynamic FEA. This video focuses on the natural frequency normal modes analysis with a brief introduction to the harmonic analysis that builds on that. Natural frequencies. Natural frequencies are the frequencies at which a structure will tend to resonate. And when you have a structure that's subjected to vibration input, you want to avoid any vibration input that's at those frequencies. Otherwise, the, the system can vibrate uncontrollably. So natural frequency analysis is often about identifying the frequencies that you need to avoid operating a system at. Here is our general system of equations or equation of motion for a multi-degree of freedom dynamic system. For natural frequency analysis, this is a undamped free vibration analysis. So we're going to drop the force. It's free, so there's no forcing function, and we're dropping the damping term. That leaves us with a simpler expression here, which just includes the acceleration and mass term and the stiffness and displacement term. Solutions of this equation have been found to be in the form of sines and cosines. So we're going to use the sine here, a times sine of omega t, where a is the amplitude function, not dependent on time. It's just a basic shape term. And there will be many solutions corresponding to many different omegas to this equation. So each omega will have a corresponding a. That's what we're going to call the normal mode shape. Now, if we take that d expression and we take the derivative with respect to time, we're going to get omega a cosine omega t. And then we take another derivative, we get minus omega squared a sine omega t. But notice that a sine omega t was the original displacement. So that means that the second derivative of the displacement um, or degree of freedom vector, pardon me, is uh, minus omega squared times the degree of freedom vector. So that means our equation of motion simplifies to this expression. And there's a trivial solution here, which is that all of our degrees of freedom have to be equal to zero. That's not a very interesting one. The uh, more general case is when the term in parentheses is equal to zero, or more specifically, when the determinant is equal to zero. So what we want to do is solve for the frequencies that satisfy this equation. That's going to give us our natural frequencies. Let's see how this works with a cantilever beam. Again, we're going to be looking for the natural frequencies by solving this equation for omega. So we need to find m and k. So first off, k from prior videos, we derived this for a simple beam, a beam that only has transverse displacement and slope uh, degrees of freedom, no axial load degree of freedom. The mass matrix was uh, derived in the prior video. Here I've, I've, I've substituted in total mass of the cantilever beam for rho AL. Now, these are our two matrices. Let's remind ourselves what degrees of freedom they're referring to. And for my cantilever beam case, I have it fixed at one end. That means I have some boundary conditions. I have no transverse displacement or slope at the left end. So those one terms are equal to zero. And that means that the only pieces of these matrices that are still free, that are, have unknown degrees of freedom, are the bottom two by two pieces. So that's what I need to focus on for my determinant, because I'm looking for my unknowns, d2y and phi2. So my equation becomes the one shown at the bottom of the screen here, where I've got two two by two matrices um, a bunch of additional terms in there, but omega should be the only unknown, assuming that you know your geometry and uh, your, your density and E and I for your, your beam. So we're solving this equation. We resolved it into this set of two by two matrices. And then what I'm going to do is lump the terms together in the, uh, with the right hand matrix and then make a substitution where I'm defining an A variable, um, A being omega squared m l cubed over 420ei. So I'm basically doing a, a variable substitution so that it becomes easier to solve. Solve this determinant, pretty straightforward. It gives me this quadratic equation in A, and then when I solve that quadratic equation in A, I get two solutions. I get two solutions here because this is a a uh, problem that only has two degrees of freedom. So I will only have 
two possible solutions to the system. The more degrees of freedom you have, the more potential natural frequencies you'll obtain. Of course, A is not a natural frequency yet. It's the omega that I'm looking for. So the two omegas that I get are as shown here, 3.533 times the square root of EI over ML cubed and 34.81 times the same square root. Those are my cantilever beam natural frequencies assuming just two degrees of freedom. The more degrees of freedom that we capture here, the more accurate your predicted result would be for these degrees of freedom. But this is a pretty good first approximation. So now that we have natural frequencies, we can move into the normal mode area. What does the deformation look like? We're finding the normal modes of vibration when we say, here's how the deformation looks at a particular frequency. So we have to go back to our free undapped equation of motion the one that has the uh, trivial solution of d equals zero, but now we know the non-trivial omegas that will allow us to solve for d. And that's what we do. We plug in the omegas that we now know and we solve for the corresponding d. But notice that we have, a, we know that the determinant is zero. In fact, we found omega to make sure the determinant was zero. Because the determinant is zero, we can't solve for d2y and phi2. There is no unique solution by definition of the, the determinant being zero. But what we can do is choose one of these to be some fixed value, and then we can use the other to find the shape of the deformation. So let's go ahead and choose d2y to be equal to one. So now the equation that I'm going to solve is shown here. I'm gonna solve this for phi two. And in fact, I can use either of the two equations to solve because they're both going to give me the same response for phi two. By the two equations, of course, I mean the two rows. Remember, this is a matrix equation, so there are two scalar equations associated with it. Okay, so continuing with this cantilever beam, looking at the normal modes, here's our first natural frequency. Plug that in for omega one in the equation um, that we need to solve for phi two and we get a solution where I've plugged in, of course, dy2 equal to one, and then when I solve either of the above two equations, I get phi2 is equal to 1.38 divided by L. Doing the same thing for the second natural frequency, plug it into the equation, and I obtain the, the um, normal mode for the second natural frequency, and that is dy2 equals one, and phi2 is equal to 7.62 over L. So, okay, not very illuminating yet, right? Well, let's see if we can take this a step further. So here are my two normal modes, my, my first two shapes of deformation corresponding to my first two natural frequencies. I wanna see what these actually look like. To see what these look like in a beam, we have to go back to the shape functions because the shape functions are how we interpolate the degrees of freedom into the transverse displacement variable. So this is our expression for transverse displacement in terms of degrees of freedom. There are the shape functions that we previously derived. And in this case, because it's fixed at one end, I know that d1y and phi1 are both equal to zero. So those terms drop out. So I end up with v of x equal to um, N2, N2y, pardon me, plus phi2 plus times uh, N2 phi. And that's the expression that you see shown here. So this I can plot. And when I do that, I get two curves. The red curve corresponds to my first natural frequency. So that's the mode of vibration, simple bending up and down. And the blue one corresponds to my second natural frequency. So that's a little bit more complicated. Um, and this mode of deformation would be f reversing itself as well. So it doesn't just go to that shape and sit there. Of course, this is harmonic. It's going to be oscillating back and forth. 